How did it feel when you surpassed me in career profits? Did you like that? Yeah, I did. I was like, <laughs> ha! Tim Sykes here with the Lion King, Jack Kellogg, on his lion, right? Pretty impressive, you want me to hold it lower? Yeah. I don't know how to do this. We're not technical. I was on a live stream the other day, or a Zoom call with Mark Crook. He made nearly 300,000 on the day. Set up a Zoom and he couldn't figure out how to get video. And like his mute button wasn't working. I was like, you made like nearly a, you know, 300,000 in one day. What's your biggest day now? That you're closing in on 10 million, what's your biggest one day? Um, my biggest day on my spreadsheet, I think is 850,000. But that was because I had partially locked some in the day before, and then I fully locked it in that day. We'll count it. We'll count it. We'll but put my, a little asterisk my next to your eight hundred fifty thousand dollar day. My biggest realized gain is six hundred fifty thousand, which I did twice. Which that was an eight hundred fifty thousand dollar day. So it was six hundred fifty realized, and then two hundred thousand that I realized the day before, but then closed the trade, that which made eight hundred fifty, and then six hundred fifty thousand I made that on DWalk and Fun. Can you send Pascal your Instagram stories from that day? Because I remember them. I don't know if you remember your Instagram stories from that day. Yeah. Do you remember what you wrote? Um, you had a few different brokerage accounts and you're like, this is for all those who doubted me. Yeah. And each one was like a different screenshot. Uh huh. It was like, send those to Pascal. I they're was, a story. They're yeah. in the archive. Don't forget that. They're, um, they're like angry stories, angry victory stories. Uh -huh. That's why I remember this. It was over a year ago and I loved it. I do remember that. Yeah. Do you have a chip on your shoulder? What do you mean a chip on my shoulder? You're bitter. People used to talk crap about you and made you work harder. Now you prove them wrong. Yeah, I did prove them wrong, but I don't like act like I proved them wrong. Your Instagram story did. Yeah, that was just the day yeah. of though. But that was your biggest day and you're, you could type anything you want. You could be like, dream big, work hard. You're like, this is for those who doubted me. It was like six stories. It wasn't even uh -huh. just one story. There was anger in that. There was uh -huh. anger in that story, my friend. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. No, it was good. Do you know about Tom Brady's chip on his shoulder? No, cause the he was picked last or something. So Tom Brady they said he wouldn't be good. Pull this screenshot up, Pascal. It's like a terrible photo of Tom Brady, like in his Fat. underwear. Yeah, he's not in shape. He's like picked 199th, and there's a story out there where. He eclipsed some record like two years ago or last year, and a reporter went in like the locker room or halftime or something and said like, what do you think about this record? And he's like, not bad for somebody who was picked last in the NFL draft. Like, you know, over a decade ago, and that's what he's thinking about. Having you a chip on your shoulder is yeah. good. I wouldn't work this hard. I wouldn't have all these millionaires. I wouldn't have 8,000 video lessons that people were like, yeah, Tim Sykes is a good teacher. Like, you know. He teaches uh -huh. good stuff. I get it. I'm a scam. Penny stocks are a scam. You're a fraud. You're not going to create any millionaires. And then in my head, I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll show you. I'll prove it to you. Mm -hmm. I feel like it, it. you already have inspiration from yourself, but then you add the doubters and the haters. And that even. It's the juice. It's the fuel of the that fire. That turns your five medium heat to, to eight or nine. And that, that flame is, We're that flame a is blue. We're a 10, baby. Uh -huh. That. To me, I, I just wouldn't work this hard. I know myself, like I live comfortably. I'm very fortunate. I'm blessed with, you know, my trading profits and my teaching profits, but I stay up 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Even if I had to get up early in the morning, like at four, five, six, we're here on West Coast. If I'm on the East Coast, I might stay up till two, three, four, doing a video lesson, doing a webinar, doing a blog post. Cause I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna say it now. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful to my haters. Like if you're my hater, Yo, give yourself a round of applause. You're not only freaking incompetent, you've also helped me so much so that now you can hate me even more because my life is even better because of you. So thank you. Do you ever thank your haters? Thank your haters. No. All right. So my haters are really my dad and <laughs> my father and also my friends and then people I met along the way who like doubt like were like, "Oh, you don't trade right or that's like not how you do it. And then my friends were like, oh, Sykes is a scam. And then my dad was like, no, you need to get a job. And all this stuff, <laughs> all the stuff that combined. And I am grateful that they said all that stuff because it made me work harder. And I was the one who was, you know, viewing the information of what I saw in my eyes. And I saw the patterns and I saw the, the stocks move and I saw everything happen. And I could make my own assumption that it's not a scam because I, like you can't just say something's a scam 
without actually doing it. And like, if you, if you do, if you trade, right? And you start trading and you just lose all your money and then you just hate on Sykes. It's not, it's not Tim's fault. It's, it's your fault for, you know, not Breaking going rule in. number one. Yeah. Not going in with the right Cut loss quickly. Cut loss quickly. That's rule number one. No one should ever lose all their money. No. But I understand what you're saying. But like, so did you have any doubts in the beginning when people are saying Tim Sykes is a scam? Did you have an inkling of doubt being like, oh damn, what did I just get into? Like when you joined the challenge, were you like, should I not have done this? Maybe for like the first like couple of weeks, but then I saw HTGM go from two to 18. And I was like, and uh, what is that one? It was some OTC, it was like M, M Y, I, I forget it, but it just- M Y S Z? My no, size? No, it was an OTC. Oh. It just did a stair step every day. It went okay. up, morning spike, sideways, spike into the close, yeah. gap up. Same thing every day. Yeah. And I saw that. I was like, holy shit, like This works. <laughs> it's the same pattern. It's just pattern. I feel like I'm taking crazy bills. It's the same pattern. Uh -huh. That's the thing. I don't mind the doubt. I don't mind the hate. Tell me. Ignore it. I'm just gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna keep showing you. Same thing like in a slow market when there's not that many plays. So people are like, oh sucks, you're on the sidelines, you're missing out. What am I missing out on? Giant market drops? Like, <laughs> I'm just gonna keep doing this. You can hate on me, you can love it, you can follow me. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna keep doing this. And the cool thing is you start to see like who's real and who's not over time. Yeah. Right? Like I had a lot of haters, especially in the beginning. When I started the millionaire challenge, people said I was millionaire challenge, duh because I had zero millionaires. Uh -huh. And then Good and Gritani became millionaires like pretty much the same time because it was a hot market back in 2013. And then now it's continued and now the last two years, 25 new millionaires, it's crazy. But I appreciate the, the hate, I appreciate the doubt. That's healthy. By the way, it's healthy to be a doubter. Most people who teach are scams. Most people in this industry, they don't have anything of value to give. The only reason why I got started teaching is because I was on a reality show. Everyone started emailing me. I don't have really that scalable of a strategy. I can't make billions. So I was like, let me just teach and be real, right? You and Gritani have scaled it the most out of anybody. You've scaled it more than me. How did it feel when you surpassed me in career profits? Did you like that? Yeah, I did. I was <laughs> like, ha, that's for Sykes always talking crap when I enter a position. <laughs> I'm trying to give you tough love too, you know, uh -huh. like. No, I understand the way that you go about your teaching. And it works. Which I like, I do like that. I do like how you gotta be a hard teacher. You I gotta think. be blunt. The, listen, uh -huh. I would rather like some people are like, oh, sucks, you're such a jerk, why do you do this? I would rather you think I'm a jerk. I'd rather you hate me than you yeah. lose all your money. You gotta be cruel to be kind. I know a lot of people who are fakes or scams or they just don't know what they're talking just about. Keep, keep holding, you'll be all right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're so nice. They're so like, they're don't so- Don't worry about it. No one even hates on the promoters that they should because the promoters are so nice being like, you know, this is the market up and down. What can you do? It's a speculative name. Like crypto promoters, I don't know if you see what they're saying right now. Like they're so nice about it. They're like one Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. It doesn't matter what it's at. There's still so much potential. And I'm like, you're down 80%, you absolute moron. You weapon- Is it down 80%? Yes, dude. Really? Are you kidding me? 70 to 20? Yeah. Hmm. Pretty much. I mean, 75, 80%, but like all coins too, like they're down 80%. Like it's, it's no different than penny size, but like even if it was down 50 or 60% off its highs and everyone's like, oh, let's just hold. It's fine. Trading doesn't have to be that stressful. You don't need to hold the whole way down. Guess what? You can buy back. You'd be shocked when I message people. I was like, you know, you can just like exit, sell for well, profits and buy back. Yeah. But they're so scared of missing. They're like, no, you have to hold. You can't time. I was like, you have to go through 80, 90% losses to potentially make like 50%? That's not good risk reward. Why do you think they're so brainwashed? Well, I think a lot of people don't want to sit in front of the screens every day and that's why they feel like they're gonna miss it, miss it because they know they're gonna be unprepared because they're sleeping in or they're going, um, they're going out with their friends or they have work or et cetera. And they're, if they put that stress on themselves to watch the market every day, they don't want to do that. They just want to put money in and make money where they don't really like like waking up and, and watching the market and trying to time it. What they want to do is just, they want to just make money. They want to hold and hold. They just want to hold. But I don't think you need to watch it every day. Like if you see something up too much, again, this is where studying comes in. I gave a speech, we'll post the link below where I gave a speech in a hard hat and a construction outfit in November of last year. Did you see that? 
The audience, is, the audience is laughing at me. I'm the only guy like saying there's a crash. Everyone else is like, it's your network. The five people you spend the most time with join my real estate. And I was like, yo, fucking crash is coming. Like, <laughs> you know, I was like, who cares if there's a deal? Like real estate is going to be so illiquid. Like you can't sit in the kitchen and there's fire all around. It's like that little dog, you know, meme where it's like, everything's fine. And he's drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah. Everything's on fire. Like get out of the kitchen. There's a lot in between, between holding every day and then just watching the screens every day. You don't need that. You can go in between. Guess what? Take 20% profits. Take 50% profits. You don't have to go for 500, 5,000% profits. That's the problem. You had a Shiba Inu t-shirt last time I saw you and I was like, take that off. I have a Shiba Inu t-shirt still. We're gonna burn that Shiba Inu shirt. But I made a thousand percent. You made a thousand percent because you were trained properly. There's nothing wrong with Shiba Inu itself. There's something wrong with holding Shiba Inu, okay? Holding and hoping. You locked in the profits because you were trained properly. Almost everybody else is down. Mm -hmm. This is the problem. You never have to hold and hope. You can cut losses quickly. You can buy back in. I got to go eat. I'm freaking starving. Click the link below. Watch my crash video. Click the link below. Join his chat room. Get wise. Stop holding and hoping. Embrace your haters. Thank you, haters. F you all.